technology is rapidly becoming a supporting pillar to literally everything that we do in our lives. Whether it's at home or at work, we're constantly interacting with different devices, applications and technologies that know more and more about us. Now with that comes some incredible convenience and amazing new functionality that enhances our lives. But it also offers cyber criminals an unprecedented opportunity to attack the physical world from the digital. Which is why we should all be particularly concerned about cyber criminals increasing innovations. Over the past few years, they've found ways to monetize each and every one of us, evolving from simply stealing credit cards through to ubiquitous attack methods like ransomware, an attack where they literally install a virus, or malicious code rather, on your computer that encrypts all of your data and demands money to get access to it once more. It's brilliant because they don't need to care about the data you have. They just need to care that you care about getting your data back. Even more terrifying now is the prospect of cyber criminals, not for fraud, not for money, going after industrial infrastructure, building management systems, power utilities, water, and more, which could lead to actual life and limb impacting scenarios. So amidst these particular technology challenges and the prevailing threat of cyber criminals, we should be very concerned that most nations on Earth are reporting a significant skills gap. That means we just don't have enough people out there who have the skills to help keep these systems safe, to find the defects and patch them before the cyber criminals. Now, there are lots of reasons that this has occurred, but one of the most significant actually takes me back to my experience as a 14-year-old boy. Now, I've told this story many times, including with Jeremy Paxman on, on Newsnight, where I rather passionately talked about you know, being a young man that showed lots of the potential traits to move into the cybersecurity profession. I was there ripping apart technology, joining interesting forums, playing with early hacking skills that could have ended up crossing a line if it weren't for lucky intervention. And that's really the key word for me, a very concerning key word, lucky. It shouldn't be a matter of luck that someone with those kind of overt skills, this all-important profession, has to run into the right person at the right time and have an intervention. We've created this, this real challenge through the last couple of generations where nearly half the schools in the UK don't offer some of the feeder subjects to computer security like computer science. That's a deeply concerning trend. Now, of course, there are lots of things we can do to improve that, like increasing the awareness of the subject overall. But this is easy to see when you look at these statistics, why we have this shortage of skilled security practitioners. So that's a problem I've deeply cared about through a lot of my profession. And four or five years ago, I got an interesting opportunity to start working on solving that problem. We were asked by one of our customers to come and help them solve an interesting problem. They'd been running a very substantial camp for about 600 kids where they'd come along and they'd get lectured to about cybersecurity. And, and that was their direct attempt to try and create more interest in the profession, to, to get these kids interested in helping to solve these hard problems. And they thought it was really boring. <laughs> they just didn't want to be there. It was an extracurricular program. They were being forced from having time on their holidays to listening to this lecture on cybersecurity. And they asked us what we might do about that. So in short time frames, we did a bit of planning, um, looked at the situation, read some of the kind of theory on, on how to engage people in that age group, and came up with this idea that we were going to gamify cybersecurity. We wanted to take the wonder and kind of passion that we had developed about cybersecurity, about hacking into things, finding flaws, and helping make software more secure, and be able to give them a little piece of that that would inspire passion and wonder in them. So we sat down, we wrote lots of lines of code, we did some design, we bought 600 Raspberry Pis. Um, Pro tip, trying to ship 600 Raspberry Pis through customs at any point in time is an interesting challenge. And we went to this camp and we ran it over three days. Now these kids turned up and on the first day, for the first hour, uh, the levels of enthusiasm were not significant. But as time went on, you could see they became more and more enthusiastic. And I knew that we'd succeeded. This approach was going to work. When on day two, 
over half of these kids turned up a couple of hours early to school and begged us to start the thing early. I mean, if you can get kids to turn up early to school, that's pretty much the most significant sign of flattery that you'll ever get. I also remember one other particular anecdote. There was this, this nine-year-old girl uh, who wasn't even supposed to be at the camp. She was much younger than anyone else. And she turned up on day one with her sister. She sat down and she, she struggled to actually be able to log into the web application to get going. I went back through half of day one and she was doing a challenge with some help from her, from her older sibling. I went back on day two, halfway through the day, and watched as she was setting breakpoints in some obfuscated JavaScript code to be able to hook some credentials that were being passed to a web application insecurely in clear text. The power of kind of brute force problem solving, of abductively working through things, building a library of techniques, the way that young brains learn through gamification is simply remarkable. And I found myself thinking, wow, these players of this game are going to fundamentally outsmart the position that I got to as a young cybersecurity professional. So we realized from that experience that gamification was going to be an incredibly powerful tool for creating that, that wonder and passion in these young adults that, that we had connected with at an early age. So we went back to the drawing board and started kind of coming up with ways to make it more relatable and to expand the content. We created the Cyber Protection Agency, this virtual online agency that would thwart criminal gangs that the students would join, laying this trace of, of ethics and the importance of applying these skills in an ethical hacking context rather than for bad. We went through and looked at all the different types of challenges we as real world security practitioners deploy day to day, from forensics to application security, secure coding, all the way through to offensive disciplines. We took those real skills and worked back abductively to kind of small portions, small skills that would have to be acquired, and then wrapped them in kind of neatly designed user interfaces and graphics to make it fun and engaging to build up and solve problems of progressive difficulty. Now that's fascinating because it enabled us to break down these real world hard things that we'd learn over the years into bite-sized chunks. But the highest echelons of these challenges absolutely reflect the types of problems we face in the real world now. L let's take a, a look at a couple of examples of these. This challenge is designed to reflect exactly the types of flaws we see in real world web applications and small businesses. The students are told that they've got to gain access to this web page that the illicit criminal gang, the Choppers, are using to protect some secrets. Well, in this case, it's just a matter of looking at the code behind the web page, scrolling through, looking at all the different information until you see something that's interesting. And this is a really key skill for security professionals, being able to filter out data that's, that's actually useful amidst a sea of stuff you may not understand. And we can see the username and password in clear text here. Moving on, uh, there are challenges that focus on cryptography. Uh, for example, this one here where we have to brute force and try each of the combinations, one after the other, oh, there's one, uh, each of the combinations of a code, and we can see below the ciphertext starting to be modified by each of our attempts. So this teaches that computers could brute force or really iteratively at high speed try different combinations to be able to revert some encrypted information back to plain text. Over here, we have another web page that's got some hidden secrets. Uh, in this case, I think it's literally called secret.html, which is rather joyful. Here we go. So this is hidden in the background on the web page. You can't normally see it. Uh, but if we go up here, we can browse to the website and find our winning code, generating large amounts of very exciting confetti. Uh, when we first implemented that, interestingly, we actually caused several computers, really small Raspberry Pis, to, to slightly melt. Uh, we've got programming challenges. Oh, I earned a badge. Uh, we've got programming challenges here uh, where we can go in and, and write code uh, and learn to control systems and find security flaws in the code that we might write. Uh, we've got kind of simulations of real world security problems like Internet of Things devices. 
looking at how they may have vulnerable uh, username and password functions or outdated security measures, um, leading all the way up to incredibly challenging cryptographic challenges, just the types of skills required to find flaws in modern applications that many of us depend on day to day. So it's really about taking those real world concepts and making them accessible, fun, and building them up from easy up to those high challenging levels. Now over the past few years, we've been developing this content base and we've got hundreds and hundreds of challenges spanning all the different security disciplines, supplemented by videos and webcasts and podcasts, enabling young adults that find this passion to connect with this wealth of content that shows them how we, security practitioners try and keep the world safe from cyber criminals. In year one alone of the program, over 23,000 young adults engaged with the program. They went through Cyberstar Assess to Cyberstar Game to Essentials to Elite. Now of those 23,000 young people, many of them were spending hundreds of hours outside of school of their own volition with no one forcing them to engage in the cybersecurity profession because gamification is that powerful a tool. And cybersecurity, as it turns out, is actually a lot of fun. Of even greater interest, when we got to the elite phase of the cyber discovery program, where we ran face-to-face -face camps, hundreds of young adults turned up to challenges that absolutely reflect the real world issues that many small businesses and even large organizations have today. We're actively changing the shape of the security profession of the next generation. Now, of course, the most satisfying thing for me and, and the people working on this important project is when you see those young adults solving real world security issues and being passionate about the first time they find a security flaw. There are these wonderful stories throughout the program, but two of my favorite quotes are, are this. Uh, I've never really come across anything that goes from the complete basics to advanced levels like cyber discovery does, and the impact it has had on my life is massive. Here's another one. Cyberstart game is like nothing I've ever really seen before. It was an absolute godsend for someone new to the industry and for it to be free was the icing on the cake. Now every one of us, no matter who we are or what we do, requires the skills of this next generation of cybersecurity practitioners to protect our future digitally connected world. So we're finding many more opportunities to run these programs. In fact, just recently, we ran one in the US with over 7,000 young women working in teams over a week to tackle Cyberstart game. And it was amazing seeing complete newcomers to cybersecurity going and deploying interesting commands on a Linux command line in only a week. A very powerful concept indeed. So what should we take from this? Well, fundamentally, gamification can be an incredibly powerful tool to enable people that maybe wouldn't traditionally academically be interested yet in a subject to connect with the passion and interest that we might see in things. It could be a powerful tool to teach problem-solving skills and to enable people to understand the concepts behind something they'd otherwise learn theoretically and to create a platform of interest for further study to fundamentally reshape an entire industry. Now, as a security professional, I'm hugely excited about this next generation of technology that, that we're building, even up to and including driverless cars. But I've also, over the past 15 years, spent so much time ripping apart technology, finding flaws, and watching cyber criminals create bigger and bigger data breaches that impact all of us. So we really need this next generation of security professionals. So if you're there at TEDx Truro watching this talk, there's two things you should take from it. Firstly, if you know a 14 to 18 year old, send them to www.joincyberdiscovery.com to sign up and see if they could be part of that next generation of defenders. Secondly, this talk isn't just about cybersecurity. It's about using gamification and alternative approaches to education with careful design and technology to enable young people to break through stereotypes for young women to see that computers and security isn't just for boys and to be able to connect with a passion that lots of us have for our own disciplines. Thanks for listening.